Ladies and gentlemen, it is a special day. Welcome to Scripture Unscripted Podcast, Episode 1. I'm one of your co-hosts, Connor Ignacio. I am currently a student at Trinity International University. I'm pursuing a, what, a bachelor's degree in Bible ministry, and I'm joined by somebody who already has it. My name is Ben Juarez. I am currently the youth pastor in Santo Cristiano, Chicago. I have a bachelor's degree in Bible theology and ministry. And man, I am super excited to be here in Scripture Unscripted podcast, where we're going to be talking about the scriptures. We're going to talk about, talk about hot topics, where it could be controversial, and what we think and what we believe. And most importantly, that you know what, man? Although you and I, we have, I have a degree, you're in the pursuit of a degree. The only thing that we need is the precious Holy Spirit. Amen. And he is our ultimate teacher, as Romans says. Amen. So I'm really excited to start off this new journey and this new opportunity. Unscripted podcast. We're going to be covering hard topics, and especially for episode one, we're talking about salvation. And that is, what, the whole basis of our faith. So, so Connor, what do you think about the word salvation? Because a lot of people have their own definition, yeah. their own interpretation of salvation. But you, as a man of God, as in the Christian faith, mm -hmm. what do you think about the word salvation yeah. when it comes to mind? It's good. Every time I think about salvation, I think about eternal life. I mm. think about from this earth passing on from death into the hands of yeah. the Father, which is Jesus Christ. So, Amen. Passing on from earth into heaven, eternal life. That's what I think about when it's when I think about salvation, so. Yeah. Yeah, what about you? When I think about salvation, I think about a man. Mm. His name is Jesus Christ. That he came to save us from our sin, from the depth of our sin, from the wrath of God. He came, died on the cross, to save us from our iniquities and offers us the free gift of salvation of grace. And that is the most beautiful way to show your love to someone exactly. by sacrificing yourself for your friend. You know, yeah. when Jesus says that if you love your friend is that person that lays down their life for them. Yeah. So I love. think that's, that's salvation right there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, as far as in salvation. Yes. What is it that you have to do to become saved? Ooh, what, do we, what is it that we have to do to become saved? Man, there's so many ways that Scripture tells us when Jesus was here on earth mm. preaching about the gospel, he was saying two things repeatedly. He was saying, repent and believe in the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Those two things go hand in hand. It is not a true gospel if repentance is not mentioned. That is a false gospel. Now, in order for us to cover those things, Connor, what does repentance mean? Mm-hmm. What is that? Because it sounds harsh to some people. It like, repent does. of your sins. That sounds harsh. It definitely does. No, repentance is really actually a beautiful thing. Amen. As a believer, repentance means the changing of the mind. Changing of the mind. Exactly, a changing Do of the mind. Do you remember the day when you repented? The very day that I repented. Now, going back, this was about, I believe, four years ago. Yeah. And if you don't know my story, my story is I grew up really depressed. I ain't had that many friends. I struggle with suicidal thoughts, panic attacks, depression, anxiety. I mean, you name it. I mean, I had it all. Yeah. And it wasn't until I was invited to a Bible study, actually by your brother, yeah. Israel. Yeah. I mean, God bless Israel. <laughs> and he invited me in. And, that, you know, I grew up in a Catholic household, but I never really knew about the Bible. I never really knew anything yeah. about Christianity or about Jesus Christ. I mean, I did not pay attention in Sunday school whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was really a slouch. You I didn't really just, care. You were just there because your parents told you to. I mean, yeah. I mean, now that I realize, I mean, I didn't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Exactly. And so, I mean, I get invited to this Bible study, and obviously you're preaching. What did you think when my brother was like, yo, did you just slide to Bible study? What, what was your first, like, uh, maybe, maybe? Honestly, brother, I mean, I was down just to hang out with Israel, your brother. Yeah. I just wanted so to So you weren't really in it for, like, I want to come to learn about the Bible. Hell no. <laughs> no. No, I did not. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I just, I just came because, I mean, Israel is such a, is still such a great friend of mine, yeah. and obviously he's your brother. And I mean, going back to that night, I mean, a guy, you know, I'm talking about me, who was filled with so much darkness. It was as though every time that you spoke a word, or even a sentence, or a paragraph, or anything that you were trying to say, it was almost as though as the light was seeping into my darkness. It was as though as a veil was uncovered upon from my eyes, you know. As though, you know, I believe in Jeremiah or, or somewhere in the Bible in the Old Testament it talks about God giving us a new spirit, a heart of stone becoming flesh. Ezekiel. Exactly, Ezekiel. And when the gospel is spread, when light is shined upon darkness, there's hope. Yeah. There's hope. Mm -hmm. And in Greek, gospel means good news. And the greatest news was being spread to me. A man filled with so much darkness. Struggle with suicidal thoughts. I mean, like I said. And I mean, ever since then, you know, you asked me if, if I wanted to give my life to Christ. Because that Christ's light, I mean, now that we're speaking about it now, I mean, this is what it is. That Christ's light was sh being shed upon me. And my darkness was exposed. My sins were exposed, right? Yeah. But that night, the fear of God struck me. Yeah. Not only the fear of God, but the hope of God. The yeah. hope of eternal life and salvation. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, you know, what you were talking about that night. And, you know, what's crazy is the night I came into salvation and, and I gave my life to Christ. I didn't win the lottery that night. I didn't, you know, go out partying in the world. I didn't, you know, play any sport and, and I had crazy success in it or anything like that. I didn't do any of that, and still it was the greatest night of my life. Yeah. Wow. Nothing, nothing that the world could offer could exchange that night. Yeah. And the truth of the matter was is the joy of my salvation was right there. The Holy Spirit, I'm, I, you know. Like I said, I mean, we're talking about Conrad Nasher of the old, the Conrad Nasher that's been put to death. So it wasn't until you made that decision to turn away from your sins yeah. and to, to stop doing your own will, to give up your life mm -hmm. for the sake of following Christ. Yeah. And whenever you did that and you believe in what Christ did for you in salvation, yeah. that's when your life immediately changed. Yeah. That's when healing entered into your life, freedom entered into your life, restoration entered into your life. Yeah, no, I remember that because... I mean, as you speak about it, I mean, I didn't know my identity. I found my identity in sports. I found my identity in friends. That's, no. why, that's why I wanted to be with your brother. Exactly. You know what I mean? And I mean, I remember when the Holy Spirit, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwelled inside of me, you know, the first time. I mean, now that I'm speaking about it, the enemy would try to attack me again with the same mental thoughts. Mm -hmm. Hey, what about suicide? What about killing yourself? Ending it. Yeah. But it was the Holy Spirit inside of me that would give that thought. Be like, yeah, I mean, I got a purpose now. Amen. Yeah. I got a plan now. I, I have a reason to still be on this earth. Yeah. And that's to glorify God. I mean, I can't do it on myself. I can't do it for myself because I know I'm a fail. You know, and... The crazy thing about it is, you know, the world tells you to follow your heart, to fulfill your dreams, right? I was doing that, and that led me to the brink of suicide, yeah. to, end, to the end of myself. And now um, that I'm part of some great plan is now I find purpose and true fulfillment and I mean shoot man that's that's the night that I gave my life to Christ that's when you received that word salvation exactly yeah saved wow. saved not only from the depths of hell and of fire but saved from myself 
So that's what I wanted to say. What about you? Nah, man, I would say that when I was 18 years old, this was shortly after graduating high school. When I graduated high school, that summer before entering college, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I, when I was a kid, I had been prophesied that I was going to be a man used in ministry, whether that be prophecy, whether that be shepherding a church, and, but that the Lord was going to use me in ministry. And keep in mind that I was three years old, excuse me, not three years old, I was a baby just being born. And three different people came to my mother telling her the exact same thing, that this baby was going to be used by God in ministry. Oh, wow. It's crazy. And I was a baby. Yeah. My mom, three different people came. While they were praying for me when I was a kid, a baby, they were saying, the Lord has told us mm -hmm. that this baby would be used by God in ministry. Sheesh. That's big. And that this baby will grow up and to lead people, a lot of people into salvation. Mm -hmm. And my mom always told me that story growing up as a kid. You're going to be a prophet. You're going to be a pastor. You're going to be a man of God. Growing up. And but into high school, I got into sports. I got into football, wrestling. The lust of my flesh was distracting yeah. me. I was into the women, into the girls. Like I was chasing the validation after the things of this world. And the only thing I cared about was entertainment. Because mm. at the time, that was really the only, only thing that was giving me pleasure and satisfaction. Yeah. And... When I came to graduation, all that stuff was stripped away from me. No more sports. I lost my identity that I had by being an athlete. Yeah. I was a three-sport athlete, and when that all that was done, I had like no purpose left in me. Yeah. So it wasn't until that I remembered that I had that calling to be a pastor, or to, that I was going to be someone used in ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Might as well give it a shot, you know. Yeah. I have nothing else to do with my life. Yeah. I really just wanted to work at a warehouse job and for a full time, and that's it. Like, not go to for school. A yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, man, it's like ministry is like, it's, it's not a high paying job, and, but it's mm -hmm. a lot of work. Yeah. So I was like, do I really want to take that route? For sure. But I knew that I was told that I was going to be in ministry yeah. for a long time. So I was like, you know what, why don't I, why don't I try it out? See if it works out or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't hurt to try it out. Would, so, I'm sorry, I'm go ahead. Say, Do you think that was a desire of the Holy Spirit, even though you didn't even have the Holy Spirit? Or, or do you think I that didn't have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but I think that the Holy Spirit had been talking to me mm -hmm. in my upbringing. This is what I'm going to use you. And I was being rebellious. My heart was hardened because I wanted to do my own thing. But again, the Holy Spirit will remind me throughout my mother, throughout other people, you're going to be a man of God. You're mm -hmm. going to be used by God to set people free, set the captives free, heal the sick, cast out demons. You're going to be used by God. Wow. Yeah. And in high school, high school me, I was like, nah. You know, mm -hmm. like I was like, I was like, I wanted to believe it, but I didn't see myself that I was capable mm -hmm. of doing that. Like I always knew the potential was there, but I never really believed in myself. Yeah. And it wasn't until I, there was a night before entering into college, I went on my knees and I said, Lord, if you are real, and if this is my calling, I give you my life and I surrender. Wow. And that night I went on my knees. I said, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my pride that I wanted to do my, my own lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I repented of my sins. My mind changed. I no longer want to do my own stuff. I no longer want to do, follow my ego and do my own you know, lifestyle. I want to do yours. Wow. And since then, I remember I received the peace of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I began day by day, night by night, walking in that calling. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But I remember that day when I received salvation, when I repented from my sins, and I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. my mind was changed. Wow. wow. My mind was changed. Yeah. Sheesh. No, oh, that's crazy. And so when you told your, your parents that you were going into Trinity to study to become a pastor, even though you were lukewarm, yeah. I mean, they probably already read you. They already yeah. 
they probably thought this guy's bluffy. Oh, guy. for sure. I remember my, my dad was cool with it. He was like, you know, he's a pastor. Right. My, my parents are pastors of Centro Cristiano Chicago. So my dad was totally okay with it. He's like, yeah, my, my son mm -hmm. joining me into the team. I love that. Yeah. But my mom, she, at first, she did not agree with it. Yeah. When I, I remember I told her, there's one I'm like, hey, mom, I applied to Trinity International University to become a pastor. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to study ministry. And then she was like, what? He says he and she smacks me. She gives me a, hit, a little punch. Yeah. She's like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Why would you do that? Yeah. And then I was like, well, you have always told me that I have the calling to do this stuff. And then my mom was just like tripping. She was like, what the heck? Why would you do this? Like, you don't know the price. You don't know what yourself, you're, you're getting yourself into. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, might not give it a try. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got nothing else to do. Exactly. And so I remember that day, my mom goes into her prayer room and she's asking the Lord, Lord, like, why? Why did my son do that? Why did my son sign up to be a pastor? He's not even ready. He's mm -hmm. like, he's barely a believer. He <laughs> barely gave his life to Christ. Right. Like, he's barely gotten right with God, like literally a week ago. He's a baby. And much. he's like already like getting thrown into the lines then already. <sighs> yeah. And so, but she's talking to the Lord. She's like, Lord, why did my son do that? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you let me do my work with him. And basically hush her. He's like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> you let me do me. Mm. I'm going to use him. And my mom was like, okay. She backed away. She's like, all right. Mm -hmm. Although he's my son. First, he belongs to you. Yeah. And then from the rest is history. But I recall that's the day I gave my life to Christ. And that's when my life changed. The best decision of your life. The best decision of my life. Out of all the, deci the decisions that you've made in your life, that was the best. Yep. Wow. I remember. And I tell people my, my testimony because... A lot of people see how the Lord has used me in the supernatural and, yeah. and how God, God's power and God's authority has been shown through my life. Right. But then it, never, it never started that way. Mm -hmm. At first, I started as a baby believer. And I had so many battles in my, in my, in my faith at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But the Lord's faithful. And the more you grow, the more you are walk with Him daily. Man, God's salvation is amazing that it's not, God's salvation is not simply one decision. It's a lifestyle. Salvation keeps on growing in your life. Mm. And it's just amazing because wow. it really changes the way that you think, your, the, the way that you live, yeah. the way that you interact with others. The Holy Spirit within you changes all of you. Yeah. Sanctification. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And talking about, you know, salvation, Connor. Yeah. You and I, we just share our testimonies of how when we first came to salvation, exactly, yeah. when we repented of our sins, our mind was changed, was renewed. You know, man, there's so many questions that we can talk about salvation, you know? Yeah. So how do you know? Here's a question that I, I often think that a lot of people have, a lot of people wrestle with. How do you truly know if you're saved? Mm. Let's talk about some of the, uh, the signs if you are in salvation. Yeah. Well, first off, I mean, I'd say this. I mean, Jesus Christ said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. Born again of water and of the Spirit. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit comes, when He dwells and resides in you, right? Yeah. There's a change. Yeah. That's called, there's a repentance. I believe, I mean, for me, I believe that repentance is a work from the Holy Spirit that, I mean, you have to choose to do. Yeah. But obviously, he's going to lead you towards that repentance. Yeah. And there's a change because the Bible says that you were once of the darkness, right? Yeah, you were that's once true. alienated from God, meaning that sure. you were an enemy. Your enemies I mean, are gone. Both me and my co host right here, Manny, I mean, we were enemies of God. I'm a, we're, yeah. not, we're not some crazy, you know. And we were, under, we were under the wrath of God. Yes, we were under the wrath of God. Uh, I mean, and so there's a change. We were once of the darkness, now we're. Of the light. And like you were saying with that darkness, yeah. you know how in, in the book of John it tells us that the Holy Spirit is the one that brings conviction of sin yeah. to the world? Yep. That's what the Holy Spirit does with every single human being. Before, mm -hmm. prior to giving your life to Christ, He first convicts you exactly. of your sin. That's a very, I think that's one of the first signs if you're truly saved. If you, 
if there's a new revelation to your sin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to expand on that? Yeah. Shoot. So are you talking about as far as the Holy Spirit residing in you? Mm -hmm. And there's like a new revelation on sin. Oh, How you yeah. view exactly. sin when you were a non-believer and now how you view sin when you're born again. Yeah. No, I mean, when you're in the darkness, you don't really know the right from the wrong. Exactly. You know, you could watch, what, adult films. You could, you could cuss somebody out, right? You could steal, you could lie, you could thief. And there's probably no conviction at all. And, you know, what's crazy is, you know, I'm starting to get into, past, into pastoring, right? And so you allow me to have a little bit of leadership towards your disciples, which I'm very thankful for. And some of them ask me, you know, do I have the Holy Spirit? And, you know, this is a question that I've asked you so many times, you know, growing up in the faith as being a baby believer. Now, I mean, I'm four years in. Uh -huh. And so I used to say, you know, do I have the Holy Spirit? And you used to say, if you, if you are to fall into sin, right? you feel any conviction? Yeah, you do. You feel guilty, you sh feel shameful. But, I mean, there's a difference between carrying the shame and the guilt and, you know, conviction. But that's a whole other topic for another podcast, obviously. But what I'd like to say also is that how to know if you're saved, I mean, first sign, if you have the Holy Spirit. And how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? You judge it by your fruits, by your actions, right? You're once of the darkness, you were once jealous, envious, prideful, selfish ambition, dissensions, all the like. Yeah. And now the Holy Spirit resides in you. And you can tell that there's a change. Even the person who, you know, who has the Holy Spirit, right? I was once of the darkness. But now I have joy. Yeah. Now I have love. Mm. Now I have peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control over my sin. Now I have a dominion over my sin exactly. and over myself. Yeah. And so, I mean, for me, that's, that's a big telltale sign yeah. that you are saved if you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. As you were saying, Connor, yeah. with the fruits of the Holy Spirit, I would 100% say that the number one sign if you are in salvation to know that if you are saved is if you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And so we saw that when we are not born again and when we're still in the flesh of desires, we see death, we see lust, we see pride, we see selfish ambitions, right? We see the, the works of this flesh. And it's really interesting that the Bible tells us that we are dead in our iniquities. We're dead in our sins. And that our purpose of life is to, to do the practice of sin. Yeah. That's the purpose of our, of our life. But when we come to salvation, when there's a repentance of the mind, repentance of the lifestyle of our sins, and we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, he gives us a helper. Mm-hmm. And this precious Holy Spirit is what? That's like a dove. And it comes into our lives and changes us within. Yeah. As Philippians says in Philippians chapter 2, it says that he who started a work in you will finish it. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit, the one that comes within us, mm -hmm. the same Spirit that was over Christ, who rose Christ from the dead, that same Holy Spirit comes inside the temple for we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Wow, that's a good point. And then the Holy Spirit is the one who is peace. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one who is love. The Holy Spirit is the one who is kind. The Holy Spirit is the one who has self-control. Yeah. So it's the Holy Spirit. The more we begin to walk with Him, He begins to change our mind and our ways. Mm. The more we spend time in our ABCs, in prayer, in the Word of God, in fasting, the more we walk with the Holy Spirit, the more we see the change in our lives according to the will of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the number one thing, that if you are in salvation, is if you see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I think a lot of people, they want the gifts of the Holy Spirit rather than the fruits. Yeah. I've, I remember when I was a baby Christian, I was like, if I speak tongues, I know I'm saved. Mm. What good is it, man, if you speak tongues, yet you have a malicious gossip mouth? Yeah, malicious intent, yeah. What good is it if you speak tongues, and yet you're still practice of sin? Mm -hmm. You speak prophecies, but, but behind your brother's back, you spread hatred. And you gossip. Exactly. And as we see that Paul tells us in Corinthians, that what good is it if you have all these gifts and you don't have love? Mm -hmm. 
The biggest sign if you are saved, if you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is the love, kind, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, self-control. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like how Paul writes about it because he talks about faith, hope, and love, right? I believe. And he's like, above all else, yeah. the greatest of these is love. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the greatest commandment, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. And then second, love your neighbor as you love yourself. I believe we, what we were, we were reading First John one of these nights, and it talked about how would you know if you're a disciple of Christ? Mm. Well, I mean, you would know them by the love that they have for each other. That's the whole, I mean, yep. basis. I mean, why? For God so loved the world, you know, to save us through his son. It was, you know, as crazy as the whole foundation of salvation, grace, mercy, the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's all based on love. Yeah. God's love for us that we can never understand. Still to this day, I mean, I've read my Bible before. And you could have, I believe, you could have any biblical scholar out there, you know, even from this lovely campus of Trinity. And, you know, it's crazy. You can't define God's love in a box. And so, I That's mean, true. you know, what do you think about that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We, another, saying, another great sign that you are in salvation. First of all, that you love Christ above all things, but also you love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's the way that you love other people. It is impossible. It's impossible for you to, to serve God and also have hatred towards someone. Yeah. It's impossible. What did Jesus Christ say? That if, you have, if you hate someone or you call your brother a fool, you, that is the equivalent of you committing murder. Mm. It is impossible if you serve Christ and you have hatred towards someone. So another big sign that if you have the Holy Spirit and, you, and you're in salvation is that you will, dis, will begin to forgive those who have harmed you. Oh, wow. That's hard. You will begin to... Yeah. You, no, no, trust me. It's, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will convict you. You need to forgive this person. Yeah. You need to let go of the bitterness and the anger. Mm -hmm. And there might be a few days that you like, you know, resist the Holy Spirit and it's like a wrestling with Him. But at the end of the day, you know you have to forgive. Mm -hmm. And your desire will start to change to, I have to forgive, to, I want to forgive. Yeah. Oh, I have to cut off pornography. I want to cut off pornography. It's a change of mind, right? Exactly. It's a change of the renewal of the mind. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? As you talk about unforgiveness... I mean, we may go on a tangent, but this is our podcast. <laughs> so we could really do whatever we want. <laughs> Speaking about unforgiveness. Yes. God says, if you can't forgive, I can't forgive you. Oh, that's a big one. So speak about that, Pastor. If you can't forgive those who have harmed you, those who have betrayed you, those who have cheated on you, if you're not willing to forgive... That is an open door for demons. <laughs> that is a wide open, that is the biggest welcome sign door like to demons. Yeah. Why? Because if you're not willing to forgive your brother, as scripture says in Matthew chapter 7, Christ will not forgive you. Yeah. So your sins have not been paid for. That's why another sign that you're in salvation, you will begin to forgive others just as Christ has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. You know what's crazy about that is, yeah, I mean, this is the podcast as, as for the listeners here. To those of you who are struggling with unforgiveness, you know, bitterness towards a brother or a sister, or maybe someone who's not even in the faith, if you really think about it, right? No. Oh. If God could forgive guilty sinners like me and you, while the Jews and the Romans, and really us, because we were once of them, right? Yeah. Alienated from God, enemies of God. Exactly. Those who are deserving of, of God's wrath. I mean, that's yeah. what we deserve. But by grace, we don't even inherit. Amen. How could you not forgive? Because if, if Christ was willing to, to suffer as 
as a human being. Not only that, we're talking about God humbling himself so much to become a human. And not only just to become a human, but to become the worst treated human being in the whole history of the world. I mean, how could you not forgive? I mean, we're talking about a guy who is who has, have, has no evil record, no, no guilt, you know, no sin, absolute perfect record. And he still forgave sinners just like me and you. Yeah. While we were still yet sinners, Christ yeah. died for us. And I think that's a, that's a good key note. I mean, exactly. why hold in the forgiveness? Or why hold in the bitterness, the you unforgiveness? Know, it's exactly like when Christ uh, has exchanged and has given us his salvation, right. we will want to do the same towards others. Mm-hmm. And I understand, I understand that unforgiveness is easier said than done. I can't imagine to the people who have actually gone through abuse and then you can look at a, your abuser and say, I forgive you. Yeah. Look at the one who has gossiped about you and said, I forgive you. Look at the one that has betrayed you and said, I forgive you. That is hard, but that is exactly what Christ did for you and me on the cross. Exactly. That we were the ones to nail him on the cross when we would sin willingly. Mm-hmm. And then Christ said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And that's how we have to look at people. Lord, I forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And have mercy on them. Yeah. Just like you've had mercy on me. It's hard. It's hard. But it's a commandment that we must do. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's no one sign that you are in salvation. Yeah. That you will begin to see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life you'll begin to see the forgiveness of Christ flow through your life, and which by that means you begin to forgive others. And number three, the change of the mind. Romans chapter 12 says that our mind begins to be renewed. It says chapter, in Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind. So for us can be doing the will of God. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world. Meaning the sinful lifestyle that it's all about doing the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Sexual morality. Pride. What else, my man? It is rebellion, murder, crime. Selfishness. Selfishness. Greed. Greed. Envy. Yeah. Slothfulness. Jealousy, dissension. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but instead be renewed. By the transformation of your mind. Exactly. And how do we renew our mind, Oh my gosh. By the word of God. Very simple. One of the signs that you are in salvation if your mind has changed. Mm -hmm. It's no longer, oh, I have to go to church. I want to go to church. It's like, oh, I, the Bible is so boring. The Bible, it's not like that. I want to learn about the exactly. Word of God. Your mind begins to change. Yeah. Oh, now, beforehand, you would be indulging into pornography like three, four times a day. I don't know, man. I used to watch it like all the time. I used to indulge on it all the time. And yeah. with, with any, I had no, I didn't care. I didn't yeah. care how many times I would do it. Now it's like, I don't want to do it no more. Exactly. My mind has been changed. Uh-huh. How else have you seen the renewal of the mind? Oh my gosh. I mean, talking about that pornography, big topic for men and women. I yeah. Mean, of all ages. And I'm not ashamed to talk about it. I mean, I was addicted. But as far as the renewal of my mind, you know, as I start, as that stronghold and that, that, that evil spirit left me, right? And as I have... Exercise my self-control away from it and just abide in the Holy Spirit. You, I slowly realized, right, that the very thing that I enjoyed in my flesh is something now that I hate. Mm. Something now that I despise, yep. you know, because yeah. now the renewing of my mind, it's like I'm thinking and I'm looking at all sin through the perspective of the Holy Spirit. And I've... Uh. I mean, this is what it is. I mean, I was looking at sin, and now I'm looking the exact opposite way. I've turned my face Amen. away from pornography and, and also my depression. You know, it's like... 
It's not like you're not. That's not your identity anymore. No, not at all. It's like it used to bring me so so much joy, and then, I mean, ever since I've stopped, it's like every time there there may be a temptation of a thought. It's like how could I do something against the God who loved me, the God who saved me? You how know, from can that? I do such wicked thing against God? Exactly, you know, and. Not only just in pornography, but like I said, in depression. Yeah. Because I used to have bad, evil thoughts. You know? Yeah. It's true. Is this going to be my last day? Will I take my life? I used to have panic attacks because I there were so many times that I thought on some specific days that mm. that was going to be it. And now, since the Holy Spirit dwells and abides in me, praise God. I get up, man, and praise I'm God. just I'm. I mean, I just want to live. Yep. That's all I want to do. I want to live. I don't even want to taste death. I Amen. mean, option A, if I were to leave this earth, I'm going in the rapture. <laughs> you know, I just want life. I, I mean, I love life. I love waking up, you know. It's true. Despite it all. You so know. you see, your mind has went from death to light. Yeah. Has gone from darkness to light. Exactly. To light. And then it goes from being slaves to freedom. Exactly. Slaves to sin to slaves to righteousness. Exactly. Sinners. To saints. Wow. It's the whole change of the mind. Yeah. And how also your mind changes how you view sin, how you view God, Mm. how you view others. Mm -hmm. So we've covered a lot of signs. First sign is you have a new revelation of sin. Yeah. Right? That we see repentance flow through your life. Mm. And that is by practicing and being led by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Which were what? Patience, love, joy, kindness, forbearance, self-control. Yeah. Number two. Number two, biggest sign that you're saved by the way that you love others. Mm. If you first love God and if you love others, yep. serving others, being kind to another, loving another, and that is sacrificing. Putting someone above yourself, man. Exactly. And that's what Christ did. He came to yeah. be a servant. And he, you know, he talks about, you know, in the gospel... One of the Gospels, he talks about taking the lowest seat of honor. Yeah. You know what's crazy is, is if you picture it, God humbled himself so much that he took the lowest seat of honor, yeah. and now he's placed at the highest seat of honor, which is the right hand of God the Father, Amen. which is revelation. Yeah, very true. And the fourth sign of that if you're truly saved, that you will begin to forgive others. Yeah. As, as Ephesians says, get rid of all bitterness. Uh-huh. Get rid of all resentfulness. Yeah. And love one another. That's another sign that you are in salvation. If you're not in salvation, you, it is going to be impossible for you to forgive your brother. Yeah. But true hearts that belong to the Lord, it may be a wrestle, but you will forgive your brother. Yeah. Yeah. And number five that we just covered, it is going to be the renewal the of the mind. Yeah. Now I will say one of the last things that is a big sign that if you're saved, is that you will begin to be a witness of the preaching of the gospel towards non-believers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You will want to preach the gospel to non-believers. Yeah. I saw this in my life, and I went to give my life to Christ, and then the Holy Spirit began to move in my life and change me from within. It was impossible for me to keep this by myself. I had to go out there and for preach sure. it. For sure. To family members, to friends, from coworkers, I had to go out and to preach the gospel to them. Yeah. So that's another sign you're going to want to preach the gospel. How did you see that? I believe that, I mean, there's such an urgency when you're saved, right? Yeah. Because you know the consequences of sin, which is the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Not only just physical death, but eternal death. Yeah. And the finished work of the cross, mm-hmm. your sin nailed upon, on the cross. Yep. And this is what you want other people to believe. About the crucifixion, not only that, but the resurrection, that your sin has all been paid off. And the one who did it rose again on the third day. And there's such an urgency because you look at your family members, you look at your friends, you look at your coworkers, your teachers, your, your, you know, your disciples yeah. as a pastor, right? Yeah. And you want nothing but salvation because that is the greatest thing. Because you could tell these people, I mean, to get over their problems, uh, you know, you could tell them any worldly advice, right? Mm-hmm. Go to the clubs, bars, this, this, that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fulfill, it doesn't satisfy, nor does it save. Because every living being, I believe, I mean, yeah, it's true, will take their last breath one day. Yeah. And the only thing that matters 
is are you saved or are you not? Yeah. And so now that we've been exposed to the truth and nothing but the truth and we've been set free by the truth, we only want to speak truth in love and we want to, what, snatch souls out of hellfire. Amen. To be a winner of, of, of souls, right? It talks about, I believe, in Proverbs, it talks about a righteous man wins souls. A righteous man persu- or A Paul, wise man. Yeah, a wise man wins souls. Paul writes about... He, to the Jew, he becomes a Jew. To the Gentile, he becomes a Gentile. All so that he could persuade men about the salvation that comes from the gospel. Mm-hmm. And obviously hell, eternal punishment. You don't yeah. wish that on anybody. No. Not even your enemy. Because you know the terrors of hell. Weeping yeah. and gnashing of teeth, outer darkness. Not just for a day, not for a month, not for a year, but for the rest of eternity. And for me, I mean... That's what scares me. Yeah. And me as a growing up and coming pastor, my biggest fear isn't that I'm not saved because I know I'm saved by grace. But are my disciples saved? Mm. Is my family member saved? Are my coworkers saved? Because they too will have to give an account from God. Yeah. And if you're not saved, where are you going? You're going to hell. That's true. And as Christians, we believe that. It's only through the cross. It's only through the resurrection. It's only through Christ that you could be saved. Through his blood that your sins could be justified and be made atoned for. Yeah. And, you know, it's crazy. The world thinks, how the world views Christians is is that we're crazy. Is that we're fear-mongering these people about talking about the consequences of sin and that it will lead all people to hell. And that... Every human being deserves hell. And they'll label us as, like I said, fear monger, as crazy, as lunatic. Extremists, yeah. Extre- extremists, yeah. And, but there's no greater love than, than, I mean, than to lay down his life for his friends. But also, but to warn people yeah. about hell. The coming wrath. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's why we do it. Amen. So. Like you were saying, it's the, uh, it's the urgency that you don't want a single believer, especially a loved one, mm-hmm. especially a loved one, to pass away without receiving the salvation of Christ, yeah. knowing that if they die without the Lord, they'll be down to hell. Yeah. And of course, no one wants to live this life knowing that their family member or a loved one is burning in hell. Mm-hmm. And that's just a tough... That is a horrendous thought to think about. Yeah. Think about a loved one perishing for eternity. Forever, man. Exactly. And that's why us as believers, as Christians, should have the urgency to preach the gospel, to be praying, to be fasting for our unsaved loved ones. Exactly. So that's another sign that if you are in salvation, that you have an urgency to preach the gospel. There's a desire, bro. Exactly. You want them to be saved. Yeah. If I myself... If someone gave me, if I had cancer and someone gave me the cure to my cancer, I said, give it to me. And once I have it, and once I'm healed from it, I'm going to want to give that cure to my loved ones. Exactly. I'm not going to want to keep it to myself because that would be selfishness. Yeah. I want my family members to be saved. And I'm going to do everything that's possible for that, for me to try to persuade to them to take this cure. Mm -hmm. And that cure is the blood of Christ. That will heal them and set them free from their sins. Exactly, man. And so another sign that you are in salvation if you have the urgency to preach the gospel. Yeah. Not just to loved ones, but to even any non-believer, friends, and the people in the streets, your co-workers. Mm -hmm. You will preach the gospel. Yeah, it's almost as though, I mean, you fear for the souls of of your co-workers. You fear for the souls, but also you love your neighbor. Yeah. You love your neighbor. Mm-hmm. And that is by telling them the truth. And by preaching the gospel, you must also understand the gospel. Mm-hmm. You must understand yes. the gospel. Let me look at me, camera. I'm, I'm looking at you, camera. You don't want to look at this one? The gospel is not simply Jesus loves you, which is true. He loves us. Jesus loves us. That's why he sent his son to die a horrific price. For you and me to save us from our sin. In order, to, in order for you to appreciate God's salvation, you must understand first 
the bad news. Yeah. And what are the bad news? That you and I are sinners. That you and I have broken God's laws. Yeah. And that you and I are what? We are liars. We are thieves. Yeah. We are adulterers. Yeah. We are fornicators. Yeah. We are murderers. And on Judgment Day, we are, all of us are deserving of God's right. wrath. We break one commandment, we're guilty of breaking the James 2.10. Yeah. So in order for us to appreciate the good news, we first have to understand the bad news. The bad news. Exactly. That for you and I, we were bought with the price. And that price was the life of Jesus Christ. So I was just saying, we must understand the bad news to appreciate the good news. Mm -hmm. It's like, in order for us to understand and appreciate the grace of God, we need to know first the fear of God yeah, fear in order God. to appreciate the grace of God. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, and hear me out on this, a lot of people are quick, just God is grace, God is grace, God is grace, mm -hmm. with no fear of God. Yeah. If you have no fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, you will end up with a false grace. Yeah. And that false grace will begin as a license to sin. God will forgive me anyways. Yeah. That's why Christ died for my sins. Yeah. I'll just repent afterwards. That's why you need the fear of God. The fear of God is this. How can I do such wicked thing against God? I have so much reverence, so much respect for my God. That grace gives me the freedom from sin, not the freedom to sin. Mm -hmm. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. Amen. Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs. That's why you and I, we must understand the bad news to appreciate the goodness of the gospel. Yeah, no, I, I really like that point, like how you brought up is, you know, I believe that believers who are only taught grace, 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 hyper grace, can never fully wrap their heads around God's grace until they've learned about the fear of God. Exactly. Which is sin must be punished. And not only sin must be punished, but sin must be put to death. Mm hmm Exactly. Yeah. So, now with that being said, next segment. Next segment. The next question that we're going to be talking about. We've covered, right, what does salvation mean to you. Mm -hmm. For us, the day that we, you and I, we were saved, what are some signs that you and I, if you're saved and you're in salvation... Now, this is a question that I think often many believers struggle with and wrestle with. Can a Christian lose their salvation? Is once saved, always saved? Biblical. Mm. First, my answer is, you cannot lose your salvation. What about you? Can a believer lose their salvation? No. A believer cannot lose their salvation once you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Your name was already written in the book of life. I've told this to you and, and some of the youth group that I don't believe God takes some eraser and erases the names that are already written in the book of life. And same thing as far as Paul, one of the early church fathers, so confident about his salvation. He talks about we already being seated at the heavenly realms. Amen. You know, not by works, but by grace. And God's grace, right? And I actually have some scripture that Go I'd ahead. like to read. I've, I had this on my lap for a good 40 minutes. It's First Titus chapter 3, verse 4. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, we're talking about salvation, mm -hmm. which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So it's already, mm. it's already been done. It's not saying he may save us. He can save us. He said, it said, he saved us. It's already done. It's already sealed. Your fate is already in Christ's hands, which I love that. So mm. can, a loser, can, can a loser, can a believer lose their salvation? No. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this is a very strong and big stronghold. In the life of a believer, yeah. can I lose my salvation? Now, look, there's a reason why, as far as the armor of God, the helmet is the helmet of salvation. 
because one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing, that the enemy attacks you is with your salvation. Are yeah. you saved? Are you saved? Are you Very saved? True. And it's really the helmet of salvation is, is to guard and to protect your mind. Not only against the thoughts of doubting your salvation, but also against temptation. You know, other yeah. things such like that. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, if you can lose your salvation, that means that you have to keep it. Mm -hmm. You must be, it's a workspace salvation. Yeah. It means that you have to do works in order to keep it, if you can lose it. And to the audience here, Whoever is watching this, if we can lose our salvation, we would all lose it. Exactly. We would all lose it because of the nature of humanity, because of the nature of humankind that we, in this flesh and in the world and the prince of the air, Satan, it is impossible for us to keep on walking in salvation without the Holy Spirit help. Yeah. And it's just, it seems so unkind that God will take away the only thing that helps us overcome sin. Exactly, yeah. The one so who's going to lead you to And basically, right? if you're here and you're watching this and you agree, if you are for that you can lose your salvation, that means that you are for that you can lose the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Holy Spirit says that has been given to us as a ticket, as a sealing of the Holy Spirit, as it's Ephesians 1.13 says, that we are sealed by the Holy Ghost for the day of redemption. It says, let me read it. In Christ yet also trusted after we have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom after also believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit's promises. And that is for the day of redemption. Mm. Seal is like, that's it. You're marked. Forever. You're forever. Yeah. Now, I already know a lot of people are going to be like, well, what if you backslide? Or what if you, like, you know, go back to your sinful ways and you depart from God? If you truly, wholeheartedly gave your life to Christ and you received the Holy Spirit, there will be times that you will fall. There will be times if you fall. But the Holy Spirit will bring you back to something. Will exactly. bring you back unto repentance. Right. Philippians 2, like you said. The one who started a good work in you will finish it. Exactly. Or there be weeks, days, months, or years, but you will come back. Yeah. You will come back. And this is not for me to say, oh, okay, well, you can't lose, I can't lose my salvation, then I can do whatever I want. That I can leave it unsin. That's yeah. not the mentality. No, yeah, let me expand on that because... The good work that was already started in you will carry it on to the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians. <clears throat> well, first and foremost, before I even get there, I believe that if you believe as a believer that you could lose your salvation, you are believing in a works-based gospel. You are in legalism. And not only that, I'm going to drop the hammer on this one. You do not fully, fully accept and believe the finished work of the cross. Jesus Christ said, it is finished. Your sins, your debt, all of it was been paid for. The only reason why you're saved is That's by good. you putting your faith in God's grace. God's mm. grace is what? Mm -hmm. Something that you do not deserve. Amen. A gift. It mm -hmm. talks about salvation as a gift. A no. gift from God. And you put your faith and you receive it. By faith, by believing it, you're sealed and you're saved. But like you said... Oh, because I can't lose my salvation. Shall I go on sinning? By no means. Paul has written about this nearly in many, many in, letters. In Romans. And Romans chapter 6 through 8. Yeah, exactly. And just because we're saved, does this mean we could go on living a life of sin? Absolutely not. If you are saved, right? If you are marked and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a desire in you to obey God's commandments. There's going to be a desire in you to no longer go into sin, to no longer go into the darkness that God already brought you out of, right? Talking about, you know, Moses, you know, God leading the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, you have no desire. There should be no desire for you to go back to that Egypt. And one of my professors here, Professor Nanenmacher, 
wherever he is. Shout out to him. He said, we are not saved by our works, but we, oh, this is what he said. We do not do good works to be saved. We do good works because we are saved. Amen. Right? And it talks about here, even in Titus, that the born-again believer will, will be zealous for good works, that they want to do good works, that they want to preach the gospel and, and to cast out demons, heal the sick, and to even do simple things, right? As far as just giving your ear to a family member Amen. or a friend. So. Amen. Amen. That's a really good, man. That, you know how James says that, that faith without works is dead. It's dead. So, does that mean that we have to do works to be saved? No. The work of Jesus Christ grants us salvation to be saved. So because of Christ did on the cross for you and me, that's why we do good works. Mm -hmm. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we do good in this world because Jesus Christ did it first for us. Mm -hmm. And it amazes me that if you truly believe that you can lose your salvation, that means that the enemy can snatch us out from the mm -hmm. Father's hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got some? So, for example, John chapter 10, verse 27 says this. Love Jesus says this. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Pause. A true believer will follow the Lord. Exactly. A true believer will listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus says this. I give them eternal life. It doesn't say temporary life. It says what? Eternal life. It comes from who? Christ. And they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out, out of my hand. Mm -hmm. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. John 10, 27 through 29. Mm. Right there. Oh my gosh, yeah, perfect. That should answer all of your questions. If you wholeheartedly are in salvation, there have been times that if you fall, if you go back to sin, if you have made mistakes, guess what? We have an advocate, the lawyer, the Holy Spirit is there to help us. We have a lawyer, the Holy Spirit, through the life of Jesus Christ, that he paid the sin for our, he paid the debt of our sins. That's why we can come with boldness up to the presence of God and we can confess our sins, as First John says, and that he is faithful and just to forgive us. Ooh. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And here, if you're watching this and you're tormented, if you lost your salvation, if I truly saved, first of all, if you've made the decision to give your life to Christ and you've repented from your sins and you have seen the signs of the Holy Spirit in your life, you're in salvation, my friend. And if you've gone back to sin, repent, confess it to God, and get up again. For the righteous fall seven times, and they get up again. Not because of our own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'd like to expand on that. Not only that, but as far as when you're talking about sheep, how no sheep could be plucked out of God's hands, right? What God the Father gave Jesus Christ, which is His sheep, as Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd, right? No man, no thing can pluck you out of the hands of Jesus Christ. Once you're in Christ's hands... Nobody could pluck you out, right? But here's the thing, though. Some people would, would, diso, would uh, take advantage of that. And they would try to wander off. But didn't Christ talk about the parable of the good shepherd leaving the 99 to go back and find that one, right? When you're really of Christ, when you are born of Christ, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, even if you backslide, I'm not, this is no license for you to backslide and to go back to sin. But even if you are, Christ is so faithful and he's so just that he's going to bring you back, right? The good work that Christ has started in you, he will carry it and finish it on Amen. to the day of Christ. And it's so interesting that the Holy Spirit will pursue us if we, if we fall into sin. Yeah. You know, in Ephesians, Paul tells us that we, can't, we don't lose the Holy Spirit but we, when we sin. But we grieve the Holy Spirit when we sin. Mm -hmm. Grieving is just making the Holy Spirit sad. But that doesn't mean He leaves us. If the Holy Spirit left us every time we sin, then where is the supernatural power that gives us the victory over our sin? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why He is faithful. God is faithful. He's not a man. 
God doesn't forgive like men. God doesn't, isn't faithful like men. God is faithful. Mm. Faithfulness is Him. Forgiveness is Him. Love is Him. That's who He is. And that's what He does when we fall short to God's glory. We have a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Through Jesus Christ, He lived a perfect life so that you and I could also live with Him. Exactly. Wow. I mean, that talks about abiding. Now, when you sin, right, the Holy Spirit still faithfully abides. He never leaves you. I mean, you know, even, what, it, what was it? David talks about, do not take away the joy, or restore to me the joy of my salvation. Yep. So he was already implying that he already had the salvation. Now, what's missing was his joy of the salvation. And joy is obviously the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And now, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit faithfully abides. And a, a famous pastor that I love to listen to, it's not about getting more of the Holy Spirit. It's not about if the Holy Spirit leaves you. It's about, or it's not about, how could I word this? Mm, of the Holy Spirit, of you getting more of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit needs more of you. Right? We know that the Holy Spirit faithfully abides in you. But the question is, do you faithfully abide in the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And through the process of sanctification, the Holy Spirit's going to switch your mind slowly but surely as you are renewed by the transformation of your mind through the Word. So, yeah. Now, I have a question for those who are against one saved, always saved. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you this. When does it become, when have you crossed the limit of sinning? Mm-hmm. Is there like a, uh, an alarm that goes off, you lost your salvation? When do you know when you lost it? Have I sinned too much? Have I sinned too less? Do I Am I not enough? doing enough? Yeah. Am I doing less? Mm-hmm. Am I reading my Bible enough? You see how much anxiety Stress, fear, just by simply not knowing if you've lost it or not. My question to you is this, and we finish with this segment. If you can lose your salvation, wouldn't you lose it? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, we could have one lustful thought tomorrow and die. Are we still saved? We could, ha- we could puff ourselves up in pride one time, which is sin. Are we saved? <laughs> we could hit the snooze. And God may even think that slothfulness and laziness. Isn't slothfulness and laziness a sin? And what if we perish? What if we die? Are we still saved? You know, we could lose our... I mean, we sin pretty much nearly every day. Amen. Right? Obviously, we're not striving to sin. We're trying, striving to live holy just as God is holy. Yeah. That's why you and I, Connor, Mm -hmm. we will never be sinless. Yeah. But we will sin less. Perfect. That's a bore. Okay. Christ was the only one that was sinless. Mm -hmm. You and I, we can't reach, although that's the standard. That's the standard that we should strive for perfection. That's why we still need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. The only one who has reached sinless was Christ. Mm-hmm. You and I, we will never be sinless, but we will definitely sin yeah. less. Yeah. You know what they say as far as, I mean, little questions about salvation is, I mean, like we've mentioned, isn't faith without works dead? I mean, I got a question for the viewers. How many works did the thief on the cross have? I mean, faith without works is dead. How was this guy saved? How did Jesus look to him, right next to him, say, on this day I'll remember you and bring you to paradise with me? Right? How many works did the thief on the cross have? And I mean, I believe wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly in Scripture that faith without works is dead. But there's a different interpretation for me is 
True faith. If you have true faith in God, the works will already show. The works will already be there. Right? Because those who are sealed with the Holy Spirit, those who are saved, I mean, according to Scripture, they become zealous to do good works. Mm. And so, so many times Paul writes to, to the Jewish, also to the Gentiles, it's not by works that you have been saved, but by God's grace. So Amen. that no man can boast. Amen. And so... By grace, through faith, you have been saved. Yeah. Amen. Man, what do you think, Connor, about this podcast? It was the very first episode, salvation, big topic, but I 100% agree and can guarantee that salvation doesn't come through the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, the, the Pentecostal church. church. It doesn't come through the church. It comes through the bride, and that is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Only comes through Christ. So, so man, really happy. We're going to continue to do these series, and it was a great, it was a great opportunity that you and I got to share mm-hmm. our thoughts and scripture on salvation. So please make sure you leave a like and a comment. Uh, comment, please, any topics that you'd like to hear for us to talk about. Can, you can message us on YACC, Young Adults and Loco Cristiano, on Instagram, on YouTube. It'll be on the top right corner. Everything there will be in our information for you to reach out with any questions or any comments. But we'd like to say thank you for joining us and that the Lord will bless you all. Amen.